Hello everybody, June here. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video about my sewing projects. I have four things to share with you uh, this time around for the April's video. Even though I felt like I sewed for the entire month of April, I only have four things to share with you. I, I don't know how that, that came to be, but anyhow, let's get started. The first thing that I made was the Santa Fe top by Hey June Patterns. I have had this pattern in my stash for quite some time, but for one reason or another, I hadn't gotten around to making it and I thought that it would be the perfect time because we're transitioning. Well, I guess now we're full on in spring. But anyhow, it is a top that sort of the combination of fabric I've been thinking about doing for a while so as you can see it has black lace um, raglan sleeves and then a solid um, front and back the lace is stretch lace and the front the blue fabric is an interlock i've had in my sash for years i made the pattern in a size l and um, i could have gone down to a size medium i made no adjustments and so the lace was a little tricky to sew but it wasn't awful. Overall, I like the blouse or the top, whatever it is, t-shirt. Um, I like the construction. I like the look of it. I wore it once and I washed it and unfortunately, the lace fell apart. Uh, as you can see in this little video that I'm inserting here, the elastic threads in the lace just tore and now it just looks awful. So I got to wear it once, which is a shame because I really liked it. But if I was to make this again, and I absolutely would make it again, if I found the right combination of fabric, because I think the construction lends itself to using different types of fabrics, or maybe even a striped fabric and using, um, you know, playing with stripes. But if I was to make it again, I would make it in a size medium. The next thing that I made was Butter Egg 5997. It is, a, um, a floy kind of blouse that I made in this sort of peachy um, colored polyester crepe with uh, flamingos on it but I have a whole video on this particular um, blouse so I won't go into too many details but I will link the video in the description or maybe in a card up here somewhere I really love this blouse I wore it uh, well I've worn it already and it wears great, it washes great because you don't have to iron it or press it or anything. Um, and I'm really like over the moon with the way that this blouse turned out. The next thing that I made, because I'm currently obsessed with making jeans, was another version of the Classic Case Patterns Ginger Jeans. I made View A again, I made this last month. I'll put the video down below. This time, however, I lengthened the rice half an inch because after wearing the ones I made in March, I felt that when they settled on my body, because you know, you put pants on, you, you pull them up, but as you start moving around, they sort of lower and they settle on your body differently. And I found that when those settled on my body, uh, they settled slightly lower than I would like. And it's not that anything was showing or that they were going to fall off, but I just felt weird with where they settled. And I felt like half an inch would sort of take care of that. So I went ahead and did that. I also removed another probably like one inch more from the waistband to make them fit a little tighter, although they're still not tight. Um, I think this fabric that I used, this um, sort of seafoam colored twill, uh, has a lot more stretch. Well, not a lot, but it has more stretch than the denim that I used for the first version. So even though I took off another inch or so from the waistband, um, they're still not fully snug. Like they're not gaping or anything, but I guess I'm used to wearing jeans that have a sort of tighter waistband and these don't. But other than that, I really love how these turned out. I think they're a lot uh, more, um, not wearable, but because they're a lighter weight, they're a lot, uh, they're a lot less hot in the heat. That's where I'm going with that. And I um, plan to always wear them rolled up because I really, really like how they look this way. And let me tell you, I am just hooked on making jeans. 
I so the pattern that I have for the ginger jeans I have the envelope that has the really high rise and then the low rise um, but then, uh, because I thought that maybe somewhere in between the low rise and the high rise would be ideal for me, I ended up buying the e, uh, the PDF version, which has mid rise um, rice, uh, and so I can't wait to make those. I've I've bought you know zipper kits and high wear kits, so I am I am ready. I am on a jean making quest <laughs> to find the right pair of right fitting jeans. The next thing that I made was the Roscoe blouse by True Bias. And I'm on the fence about this one. So according to my bust measurements, I should be between a size 14 and a size 16. But I went with the finished garment measurements and I settled on a size six. Uh, I shortened the sleeves three inches and then I added two inches to the width of the, um, the band that gathers the sleeve in because I thought that they would fall higher up, uh, but it actually, the sleeves are pretty long still. So I really didn't need to add that amount to, the, to, to that um, sleeve hem band thingy. Um, I don't know how I feel about this one. First of all, the fabric was an absolute freaking nightmare to work with. It is uh, a rayon crepe. Well, fabric that come calls it crepe, but it's actually, it feels a lot more like a gauze. And it was a nightmare to sew with. It was like, Something that should have taken me like maybe one or two days, it lingered in my sewing <laughs> space. It's not even a sewing room. It lingered on my sewing desk for a good week and a half because I just could not psych myself up to work with this fabric um, to do the, the gathering of the neckline and the gathering of the sleeves. Second, the V-neck, it's not a V-neck, it's a slash into the neck. It's very, very deep, even in a size six. Like I can see everything. So I imagine that if I had made the size that it was recommended for my bust, uh, that sleeve would have probably been down to my belly button. And then um, I still think that even though I made several sizes smaller than what um, that what I should have based on my bust on my uh, full bust measurements. It's still pretty big and I don't know I know that it's supposed to be like sort of boho -y type thing but there's a difference between boho loose and this is a tent and I feel like this is a tent I think the fabric is perfect for the pattern I don't think that the fabric and the pattern together are perfect for me at least not the way that I made them so I'm going to sleep on it, but I will probably pass it along to somebody who will wear it more. Uh, maybe my mom, maybe I will just donate it. I still have a lot more of that fabric. Although let me tell you that I do not um, want to even want to think about making anything else with that fabric at the moment because it was, it was hard going. And the last thing that I made was the patterns for pirates, peg legs, uh, uh, leggings. I made this a few months ago. I can't remember exactly when, and I didn't show them to you on here because I normally don't wear leggings as pants, but I thought, okay, you know, if I, I made it a second time, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. So I made them in this uh, brushed uh, uh, poly knit, double brushed? Poly knit, yeah, something like that. Um, you know, it's a fabric that um, that other big legging company uses that shall go unnamed. And I made it in a size S, and this time I made it in the um, lower rise with a regular waistband. The previous time I had it high rise, and it is high. On me, it goes almost under my bust. It's that high. So yeah. Uh, I feel like I need to uh, tell you that this is not how I normally wear leggings, even though I'm showing them to you here. 
I normally wear leggings with things that are at least like mid thigh long and oh my god the ambulances yeah so I normally wear my leggings with uh, either dresses or very long tunics but I thought that just to show them to you here so that you can actually see what they look like this um, it's a toaster sweater that you're seeing that I made a long time ago would be the way to do it and that is all that I have for this uh, uh, video, which was April projects. I always forget because I do them so far after I make anything. I'm not making any sense. So I'm going to cut this off here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.